By the end of their voyage, the pilgrims had endured 66 days at sea in terrible storms and freezing conditions. They sighted land on the 19th of November and were forced to weigh anchor in Cape Cod by strong storms. Bradford writes of their joy and relief at having their feet once more on dry land, but their good fortune was not to last. It was the start of a bitter winter where nearly half the voyagers died. The New England winter proved so inhospitable that the crew and passengers of the Mayflower stayed living on the anchored ship until the spring. A terrible disease sighed through them all. Bradford writes that the situation was so bad that the living were scarcely able to bury the dead. It wasn't just the pilgrims who perished. Over a third of the crew perished in that winter. This church, just metres away from where the Mayflower set sail, is where the captain of the ship, one Christopher Jones, was a parishioner. He was one of the lucky ones to escape the winter and sickness, returning here in May 1621. Sadly, less than a year later, he too had died and is buried in this churchyard. To mark this tragic period in the story of the Mayflower, we have chosen one of the hidden gems of Renaissance music, Morley's La Boravi in Gemi tu Meo. It's an exquisite six-voice motet whose long, plangent lines and aching suspensions beautifully depict the suffering of the voyagers and perfectly convey the motet's text. I am weary of my groaning, every night I wash my bed and water my couch with my tears. Morley's motet exists in two sources, collections from 1616 and 1631. Intriguingly, a very similar motet with the same text exists in a publication printed in Naples in 1595. This time, the motet is attributed to the Franco-Flemish composer Philippe Rogier. It seems Thomas Morley knew a good thing when he saw it and adapted this work slightly before passing it off as his own. The fact that the piece was still in wide circulation 10 years after the Mayflower landed in New England is proof of its enduring popularity.